Hello. I'm ill and I've run out of backlog, so you're gonna get a slightly clogged up story. Um, this slightly clogged up story is The Three Apprentices by the Grimm Brothers. There were once three apprentices who had agreed to keep always together while travelling and always to work in the same town. At one time, however, their masters had no more work to give them, so that at last they were in rags and had nothing to live on. Then one of them said, What shall we do? We cannot stay here any longer. We will travel once more, and if we do not find any work in the town we go to, we will arrange with the innkeeper there that we are to write and tell him where we are staying so that we can always have news of each other, and then we will separate. And that seemed best to the others also. They went forth and met on the way a richly dressed man who asked who they were. We're apprentices looking for work. Up to this time we have kept together, but if we cannot find anything to do, we're going to separate. There's no need for that, said the man. If you will do what I tell you, you shall not want for gold or for work. Nay, you shall become great lords and drive in your carriages. One of them said, If our souls and salvation are not endangered, we will certainly do it. They are not, replied the man. I have no claim on you. One of the others had, however, looked at his feet, and when he saw a horse's foot and a man's foot, he did not want to have anything to do with him. The devil, however, said, Be easy, I have no designs on you, but on another soul which is half my own already, and will be all mine soon. As they were now secure, they consented, and the devil told them what he wanted. The first was to answer, all three of us, to every question. The second was to say, for money, and the third, and quite right so. They were always to say this, one after the other, but they were not to say one word more, and if they disobeyed this order, all their money would disappear at once, but so long as they observed it, their pockets would always be full. As a beginning, he at once gave them as much as they could carry, and told them to go to such and such an inn when they got to the town. They went to it, and the innkeeper came to meet them, and asked if they wished for anything to eat. The first replied, All three of us. Yes, said the host, that is what I mean. The second said, For money. Of course, said the host. And the third said, And quite right too. Certainly it is right, said the host. Good meat and drink were now brought to them, and they were well waited on. After the dinner came the payment, and the innkeeper gave the bill to the one who said, All three of us. The second said, For money. And the third, And quite right so. Indeed it is right, said the host. All three pay, and without money I can give nothing. They, however, paid still more than he had asked. The lodgers, who were looking on, said, These people must be mad. Yes, indeed they are, said the host. They are not very wise. So they stayed some time in the inn, and said nothing else but, All three of us, for money, and, and quite right so. But they saw and knew all that was going on. It so happened that a great merchant came with a large sum of money, and said, Sir Host, take care of my money for me. Here are three crazy apprentices who might steal it from me. The host did as he was asked, and as he was carrying the trunk into his room, he felt that it was heavy with gold. Thereupon he gave the three apprentices a lodging below, but the merchant came upstairs into a separate apartment. When it was midnight and the host thought that all were asleep, he came with his wife, and they had an axe and struck the rich merchant dead, and after they had murdered him, they went to bed again. When it was day, there was a great outcry. The merchant lay dead in bed, bathed in blood. All the guests ran at once, but the host said, The three crazy apprentices have done this. The lodgers confirmed it, and said, It can have been no one else. The innkeeper, however, had them called, and said to them, Have you killed the merchant? All three of us, said the first. For money, said the second. And quite right, too, said the third. There now, you hear, said the host, they confess it themselves. They were taken to prison, therefore, and were to be tried. When they saw that things were going so seriously, they were, after all, afraid. But at night the devil came and said, Bear it just one day longer, and do not play away your luck, 
not one hair of your head shall be hurt. The next morning they were led to the bar, and the judge said, Are you the murderers? All three of us. Why did you kill the merchant? For money. You wicked wretches! You have no honour of your sins. And quite right, too! They have confessed, and are still stubborn, said the judge. Lead them to death instantly. So they were taken out, and the host had to go with them into the circle. When they were taken hold of by the executioner's men, and were just going to be led up to the scaffold where the headsman was standing with naked sword, a coach drawn by four blood-red chestnut horses came up suddenly, driving so fast that fire flashed from the stones. And someone made signs from the window with a white handkerchief. Then, said the headsman, it's a pardon coming, and pardon, pardon, was called from the carriage also. Then the devil stepped out, as a very noble gentleman, beautifully dressed, and said, You three are innocent, you may now speak, make known what you have seen and heard. Then said the eldest, We did not kill the merchant, the murderer is standing there in the circle, and he pointed to the innkeeper. In proof of this, go into his cellar, where many others whom he has killed are still hanging. Then the judge sent the executioner's men there, and they found it was as the apprentices said, and when they had informed the judge of this, he caused the innkeeper to be led up, and his head was cut off. Then said the devil to the three, Now I have got the soul which I wanted to have, and you are free, and have money for the rest of your lives. It's the Three Apprentices by the Grimm Brothers. I enjoyed that story, as I seem to do for many of them. Uh, I, I actually didn't see that coming at the end. I should have done, maybe. But, yeah. I'm going to pick next week's from the jar. Can I tip one out? No, I'll just pull this one on the edge there. I can see it's a Grimm Brothers story already. It's called... Oh! It's one of the first in the book. It's called Cat and Mouse in Partnership. Which we got to look forward to next week. If you have enjoyed watching this, or listening to this, despite the... Um, uh, subscribe for more, and, you know, all of the like buttons, and I have a link to my Patreon page if you fancy supporting me there. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you next week for the next story. Bye.